All right, um, today we're going to discuss what makes a good walkthrough and what doesn't. Um, so if you see right now, I've got this scene set up. Um, it's pretty simple. I've got two scenes here with two identical scenes. And for the most part, it's three boxes with a little additional box here. But if you look, the camera on this one flows around the box and snaps over and like so. Okay, so when you look at this, we're going to go look at this, um, it basically zooms around the box and then it snaps over to this one and then it zooms over here. Now, first things first, there's, with a walkthrough, you don't really want to zoom around objects. Um, zooming around objects is very tedious and it, it you lose the attraction of the environment itself. Okay, so when you zoom around the object, yes, you want to see, you know, you want people to see everything, but that's what a turnaround uh, movie is for. And you can just put that on a pedestal and turn that right around. So get rid of that part first. That's the first part. The second part is the, um, the snap. Okay. A lot of people want to point to everything in the scene. So as you see from here, I'm going from frame 75. I instantly snap it over to this, this other object. Okay. If you do that so many times, you start getting motion sickness and it just, it's not that great. So don't zigzag back and forth. Don't snap your, your, your camera lens back and forth. Okay. And the other thing is, I'm completely switching, I'm completely going 180 degrees just to get to this point. Okay, the other thing is you also want it, you don't want it ending on this particular frame. What you want to do is let it pause. So don't just stop it here. Okay, if that said and done, let's go to the other one here. And I'll show you guys some tips and tricks to, to deal with this. Okay, so the first tip that I would tell you right off the bat is that you take your 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 camera and you set up to a path constraint to this first path now notice this first path is actually backwards um, on the the path constraint oh no it's not backwards it's uh sorry it's uh it's right so the 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 path goes fine um so what you don't want is you don't want sharp angles in there you want the camera to be smooth, flowing, and basically move accordingly. Okay. Now I think uh, I'm going to switch to a 20 millimeter lens on this. Okay. So the next part is you really don't want this path. You don't want this completely and utterly controlling your path. So you want to be able, if you want to look up a little bit, look down a little bit. You know, a free camera works okay, but again. You know, it just really depends on what you're going for. But what I like doing is I go into the helpers and add a dummy. Okay. So I'm going to just add this dummy here. And the dummy goes on to, where is it at? Go to animation, constraints, and path constraints. And I apply the dummy here. Okay. Now, with that, if you notice, the dummy moves along along the path as well. Now, what you can do is grab the um, grab the node for the car target camera, and you can actually use select and link and link this to this node. So now, what what will happen is that will actually follow accordingly. All right. Now, when you look at this for the camera, so this is camera two, uh, let's do like so. So when you look at this for the camera, I'm zooming back and forth, all right? And I'm following this note, which is okay. Now, another thing is you really want to pay attention to, let's go back and uh, this is top view. Uh, another thing you want is, I'm just going to move uh, we got to get 
in there. Alright, so I'm just going to, uh, right now I've got these at floor level, so I'm just going to move these up a little bit so that it's not so high. Now, what you're what you're doing here is I'm just going to go back to camera too. So what you're doing here is you also know that on this path constraint, if you go into the motion panel, um, you've got the path and you've got the percentage along the path. Okay, so what we can do is we can actually control the movement of that. So if you want to look at something a little bit longer, let's go into Auto Key here, and we're going to just scroll this down. And so at 0%, so if we want to keep looking at this through frame 25, all right, or say frame 20, we're just going to change this to 0% along the path. All right, that's going to give me the, I'm going to stop and look at that for so many frames. All right, from there, then I can zoom around and it'll change accordingly. Now I've got my angles, I think, screwed up a little bit here. Um, so let's, uh, let's angle this down a little bit. There we go. Actually, undo that. Let's put off my auto key. Now angle it down. So this now now with my um, now I'm looking at this path constraint and I'm moving back and forth. Now notice I'm looking at this and I'm going past it. I don't need I don't need to sit down and stop and look at it. If I do want to stop and look at it along this path, again we turn on the auto key and we go into the node here that's following this path and I think that's I don't think that's selected here it's there we go okay so we go on to the path constraint and from here to here so this is 20 say I want to look at this from 35 so I'm going to actually Right now, this is at uh, 37.5. So if I want to start looking at this at frame 35, and we're going to go 37.5% along the path, and enter. And so now it's going to look here, move over to here, and if I want to zoom in on it a little bit longer, I can actually slow this down, so maybe I'll make this only like 40% of the path. 40. And then that basically is going to make me slow down and look at that a little bit more. All right. And then I'm going to end up here. And instead of, instead of looking at this at 100, which is it's snapping automatically back, to my my uh, end scene here at 99. Um, I don't know why that's that's doing it, but so instead of doing that, I can actually stop here, and at this point, I can do instead of 85, I can do this at 100. All right, and so this will slow down from 100. And like so. Now that's moving. It's it's changing because I'm still moving the camera at 100. All right. Um, and that's because I just need to click on the camera, and it's at 128. So I would just there you go. That's 100. Um, so now at the camera, I can actually stop this here at 100, and it'll stop. For an extra 10 frames okay now you can go in and you can set this to 95 and do a small zoom so it's it'll s zoom in a little bit more so then you're you're basically framing now if you notice here that it automatically snaps because i sped this up i'm bouncing now 
right? And that bounces because of the, the short amount of time frame. So if I scale my time up a little bit more, I can adjust my frames so that it doesn't feel like it's it's bouncing so much, all right? And so, and if I decide that if my object is that I'm looking at here is more important to focus on, what I can do is change my position. So I'm going here, I'm looking at this. So at 35, I'm looking at this and say I want something to catch my eye here. So I'm going to auto key this and I'm going to move up a couple frames and I'm just going to do this real quick here. Do a behind frame and if I want to zoom up, I can just simply change the angle on that accordingly and I can change and have a little bit more control over things. Okay. Now this is just me putzing around here within a, about 10 minutes worth of time, but something like this is going to be a lot better than the, the prior one where I'm snapping back and forth. Um, you know, if I were to change this a little bit more, I'd probably do less of a less of an angle. And then that's the nice thing about this is because I'm on the the angles, I can actually go in and smooth this out a little bit and create things a little bit nicer. So along the way, and again. It's just a matter of, you know, if I'm not happy with something, I can always go in and, and tweak it accordingly. So I can hit H. And let's do all this stuff here. Okay, so there's my camera 2 target. And then along my camera 2 target, I can actually adjust and move things around. Okay. So it's just a uh, just a, a matter of, of what I want how I want to maintain this. So that's pretty much how to create a walkthrough and manipulate the camera. Um, and again, this is it. It takes some tweaking. You know, it's not something that you just want to toss a path down and um, let the path do its job. So all right, I hope that helps.